Dr. Yolanda, it's so great to see you again. And I know we've been having some conversations about OCD, which is a area of expertise that you do amazing work in. And you have extensive training and exposure and response prevention, which is the gold standard for OCD treatment. But I also know that you incorporate a lot of brain science into your work and some newer kind of brain focused treatment modalities. And so would you be open to exploring for us a little bit about how that works and what that looks like in the treatment space? Yeah, absolutely. So let me just ground us again, just in what OCD is and what we're trying to do when we're treating it. So OCD is a cycle, really a vicious cycle of obsessions and compulsions where something pops in, we get distressed and we do something to try to alleviate that distress. I and mean, what happens is we get stuck in that cycle. We keep going back to that same compulsion, that same action to try to alleviate our discomfort. And that's where we get stuck. So exposure and response prevention is a way of breaking that cycle. And it is a really integral part of any OCD treatment. Um, but there are other types of interventions that can really support that work. And I love to bring this into my work with folks that are struggling with OCD. So one of the techniques that I bring in is the havening techniques. <clears throat> and these are grounded in neuroscience. So some of what we know about how the brain works is that the brain is sort of tuned in to always be scanning for problems, <clears throat> negative things. It's got a little bit of a negativity bias. It's always scanning <laughs> just a little, right? And it's a really rehearsed way of, of looking for these things. And sometimes um, when, when the brain perceives that there's a problem, that there's danger, that something could go wrong, it sort of takes over the whole system. And it really pulls our thinking brain into that conversation. And rather than our thinking brain being logical and helpful and trying to find a solution, it gets pulled into that worrying and all these thoughts sort of sourcing up all this additional information that further distresses us and stresses us. Right? Can it even enhance the obsession? It can, yeah. Some folks really struggle. There are some folks with OCD that really struggle with the obsessive piece. Sometimes even more than the compulsion piece, they just get stuck in that ongoing thinking and rumination. And it's really hard to interrupt that cycle. So that's why I love bringing in the havening techniques because it's a way of breaking that, that thinking loop that we're stuck in. Um, and so one way that we can do that is by teaching folks a combination of applying a type of gentle touch to the body. There's different ways that you can do this and that helps to calm the brain down, mm. right? We often learn ways to calm the body down, but most of us don't have the tricks to calm the brain down. And so these gentle types of touch, this is a sensory modality, a psychosensory technique to calm the brain down, slow it down. And then we give your thinking brain some tasks mm -hmm. to help knock it off whatever it was thinking and ruminating about and get it back to doing a different job. Mm -hmm. And the combination is really helpful. It's helpful because it breaks up that obsessive thinking. And it's also a really great go-to whenever we get activated in the moment. Well, I know we've talked a little bit before about how we have the obsessions that show up and they don't feel very good. And then we move into the compulsive behavior to mitigate the obsessions or to help it soften and how those two experiences are linked together. And I would imagine just if we're stressed or anxious or worried, how those obsessions might even get louder therefore feeding the compulsions even more. Does that sound of my, on the right track here? Yeah, it can. Sometimes that cycle starts to grow and snowball, and sometimes it morphs a little bit. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the nature of the obsession shifts a little bit and the compulsion shifts a little bit. And so we do see some fluidity. And sometimes it does have that tendency to grow and get bigger because it's sort of gaining energy and gaining momentum. So from what you just described with the, the mindful touch or the havening touch, if we can decrease or calm or slow the brain down, that might support the obsessions and the compulsions in also getting smaller or just kind of stepping back a little bit. Yeah. It's so a, does, oh, go ahead. 
No, I was just going to highlight what you said. It's a great way of stepping back. It's like hitting a pause, right? Push pause on this moment and just kind of do a little mini reset. And, and that's very powerful. So how does, because I, I know clearly I'm a Havening Techniques trainer, um, that Havening is not a frontline intervention for OCD treatment. There's very different brain areas that are getting looped into that process. Where do you integrate Havening into your ERP treatment? Because you've shared with me how powerful it is. Yeah. So I integrate it in, I would say maybe three different ways. So one is just the way that I described which is a way of in the moment, pushing pause, taking a break, down-regulating the system. Another way that I use it is to build resiliency, to sort of shore up some of our inner strengths and cultivate some of those things that we feel like we're missing as we're navigating our world, Mm -hmm. right? If we're so used to this OCD cycle, we're so used to navigating the world through a lens of fear and dread. Or out of control and out of control. Absolutely. And if you think about the brain, right, those are those, it's almost like our brain has little freeways, little neural, neural freeways. And we're just getting pulled onto that. That's our autopilot. That's our default. So havening is really useful for creating these off ramps and building out another type of nav, another way of navigating the world, another way of moving forward through it. It's another way I love to pull that in. I could see how that would enhance the ERP piece when you're looking at doing the exposures and having a stronger sense of capacity in the exposure space, perhaps. Absolutely. There's a way of using havening to build up and sort of prepare for things that we anticipate are challenging. And so it's a beautiful way to sort of almost rehearse and get ready for work that you anticipate is going to be a little bit difficult or a little bit uncomfortable. There was a third way that I bring in havening that I wanted to mention, which is, you know, sometimes folks with OCD will describe their brains as being sticky, gluey, that things just get stuck and it's hard to uh, unglue them from there. Yeah, and things just kind of come in and they just rattle around and it's hard to let go. Um, To the extent that there are specific events or situations or even felt senses that are getting stuck, right? A specific thing that happened, a specific time I engaged in a compulsion or a specific sense I have that I always feel ashamed when I'm engaging in in a compulsion. In the clinical space, that's an opportunity to use havening to help soften some of that, help unglue some of that so that it doesn't feel so stuck and so easily accessible. We know that from, from many of us, our present moment is defined by our past to 90% from our past. And so if there's stuff back here that's coming forward, we can use havening to help keep that back there. So it's not part of our present moment. Yeah. That kind of reminds me of when I had PTSD and I would have these moments where I just felt kind of out of control or my brain was, I loved what you said, rattling around over here. And I would be over here going like, what do you brain? what are you, what are you doing? (laughs) And what you just described is how, so what I'm hearing is those moments, even, you know, in, I guess, any sort of stressful encoding or traumatic encoding is going to follow us forward and play a role in how we're experiencing the present moment. And so clearing out those experiences for somebody who has OCD would also be really supportive to enhancing treatment. Absolutely. It helps clear that stuff out. I think about it as being some of the, the, the underbrush mm-hmm. of, of what exists for us. And if we can clear that out, we have more room to breathe and more room to choose. Um, and I think that's, that's an area where folks with OCD get stuck is they don't feel like they can choose what to do in the moment. They don't feel like they're in control and clearing that stuff out opens. And now, now possibilities become available to us. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for sharing. I mean, this just adds a whole new layer of hope when I think about OCD treatment. You know, we've got the incredible ERP and then integrating in how do we help the brain heal while you're doing the exposures and the response prevention. So any final thoughts that you'd like to leave the audience with? I think 
my parting words would be um, words of hope and, and optimism that there is really effective treatment uh, for OCD and, and treatment that can support not just the person who's struggling with OCD, but those around them who oftentimes get pulled in to the OCD know that there is really effective treatment, treatment that is grounded in research and in neuroscience um, and that is really powerful and that you don't have to continue to be stuck. Well, thank you. And we're, we'll link some of the videos below for the havening interventions that Yolanda mentioned, some of them for the CPR for the amygdala, which is that soothing touch and giving the brain a different job and some of the resiliency pieces. And then if you're here in California and you'd like to work with Yolanda, our, our information's linked below, or I know there's an organization, um, IOCDF, Yes, IOCDF, the International OCD Foundation. They have wonderful resources. And Yolanda is also sharing that their conference is designed for not just clinicians, but also people who are living with OCD for their loved ones. Lots of great workshops. So take a look at their website and you know, get the tools that you need. There is, there is hope. So thank you again. And I know we'll see you soon. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.